still saying, you stand to your feet now. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 6. And I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. I know some of y'all King James only. It's all good. It's all good. Y'all pray for Elder Ivy. Amen. <laughs> you got it? Okay. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. Give me a minute. We're going to read all 15 of these verses real quick. And I'm going I'm to extrapolate from We're still on our series on grace. Let me say this also real quick before I read. We're doing a whole, uh, uh, Bible study on the Holy Spirit. Make sure you come. We had a good time last week. Amen? Had a great time going in. We're just, we just going to dive into it. We're going to get into a little, what I say, pneumatology. All right? Big word just for spirit. Amen? Now at this time, while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews. Because the widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. It say daily serve. Say somebody say daily. daily. And we tripping about two days. Anyway, so the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, It is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Yeah, that's going to be a problem right now. Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we would devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The statement found approval in, with the whole congregation. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmir, oh, I'm sorry, I'm glad, Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. And, then, and these they brought before the apostles. And after praying, they laid their hands on them. The word of God kept on spreading, and the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. And Stephen, here go our word, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. But some men from what was called the synagogue of the freedmen, including both Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and some from Cilicia and Asia rose up and argued with Stephen. Watch this. But they were unable to cope with the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly induced men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people, the elders of the scribes, and they came up to him and dragged him away and brought him before the council. They put forward false witnesses who says this man incessantly speaks against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Nazarene, Jesus, would destroy this place and alter the customs which Moses handed down to us. And fixing their gaze on him, all who were sitting in the council saw his face like the face of an angel. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for today. Stir us up, God, to live a life that's revolutionary. Stir us up to get out of the, the mundane. But also sometimes, God, in the mundane of life, let us still be able to see you. But God, you said that's, that's, that's not a shortage of work to be done, just a shortage of workers. So you told us to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send workers into the harvest. God, we pray for workers on today. But God, speak to us. Let us know the place that you called us to be to go make a difference. Restore. Rest. Now go our circumcise our ears that we may hear in our hearts that we may receive. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you go to your seat, tell somebody I got a full tank. Now ask them, do you have a full tank? I want to thank Pastor Mark and his wife for visiting with us today as he take a break. How many of you know pastors need breaks? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Usually when uh, this, 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 this says the scriptures in Acts 6, uh, usually we use, we, we use this typically sometime for the start of uh, what they would call uh, deacon ministry. Or whatnot. Some people use it for that in some context, in some denomination. Uh, I want to just extrapolate some principles from it so you can see what God is really saying to the church particularly as we talk about this month, Revolutionary Grace. Uh, the thing is, uh, there was a problem in the church. And, and, and what we have to understand is that just because you're in church don't mean there won't be issues that come up. 
the issues, the, the, the thing is, you must be ready to handle the issues that arise. So what the issue is here, you had two sets of, of, of widows here. You had the Hellenistic widows, which that were the Greek widows, and you had those who were already of Jewish descent. And so what happened is the Hellenistic widows say, look, uh, we, I know we ain't grafted in this thing, but, but, but our people are not being taken care of. Our widows are not being taken care of. <coughs> and notice what it said. It said the daily administration of food. Daily. And we only can get people to show up once a month. See, when you go to Acts 2, let me go back to Acts 2. In Acts 2, it said their numbers increased great daily. Right? But, but it also said that they did a couple of things. It said they, 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 they shared a meal, they fellowship, they listened to teaching. And it was daily that they did this. I understand we're in 2018. I understand that something may, may can't happen daily as is. You have to expand and, and, and go grow with the church. <clears throat> but the, the issue becomes this. I'm wondering are we still, how we got lazy. I wonder how we got complacent. I wonder how we started using the excuse, I can't spend all my time in church. And I understand that. Trust me, when I started out, we, we, we did a lot of time in church. But some of us have went the whole other way. Right. And you don't spend no time in church. And then sometimes you end up coming, and, 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 and it's all about what you can get. Some people come to church seeking opportunities for their platform outside the church. And so they don't become bringing their gifts and submitting and getting fed into, they want to come and, 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 and say, hey, well, what can I do or what opportunities exist? Now, y'all know I believe in outreach. I believe in moving and shaking to a certain degree that uplifts the kingdom. Here's the place sometime where we get um, uh, over emphasis on marketplace ministry. And I'm for marketplace ministry. I'm definitely for marketplace ministry. But what happens is you have people coming to church to make connections and not to get connected. Amen. And so what happens is, I come to see, uh, they may hear, and I'm just, y'all know, I'm, I'm going to speak this humbly. They, they come to see, who is this Dominique Johnson who may have be five on the floor? He's dealing with new time, make he's doing that. But when you come in, if you, and, and see, people tell somebody, they say the Holy Ghost. Don't lie. See, see, people think you can play with him, but he, he can, he can, he'll, give you, he'll give you something and say, uh-uh. You may not get it right away, totally, see, but it's that, uh-uh, this person here, they just want to they just want to come in and, and, and suck the life out of you. They want to use you for what they can get and not give nothing back in, amen? Don't get me wrong. You come to church to get something, to get a word, but let me ask you something. What are you giving? See, see, you have, a, I, I, I keep saying this because I want you to get it. It ain't just what you can come and get, it's what you come to give. See, our very nature as a king and a priest, as a priest unto the Lord, I mean, we serve God and people. The thing is, we want to just be served. We want to just make my bank account bigger. Nothing not, not wrong. Grow it, grow it, grow it, because, you know, we need the tithe, but you don't even give, amen? amen? You don't even give. Your bank account, man, but, 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 we, but then you come and talk about, why they ain't fix that? Because you ain't gave nothing, amen? You came to take, and so what, what, why am I going down this road? It's because you had people here who were happy to be saved, and they understood something. That's why I tell people you have to look, read the Bible sometime in its context as an Eastern Asiatic text, which means everything was community-based. So a lot of times when you see the word you, he ain't talking about you. He's talking about you. But see, when you read it from a Western Western uh, uh point of view, everything become about you, your personal you, instead of us, instead of us moving together and moving out. So guess what? There's a problem that come up. The apostle said, check this out. We ain't trying to stunt. We ain't trying to be that, you know, on a different level. But right now, this is it's, it's a new thing here. So you got to understand, one, watch this. Let me, let me mess you up just a little bit. There was no New Testament when they started. So they said, man, right now, we know this thing about the spirit on Cain is all, is kind of chaotic. See, the, other, the early church was chaotic too. Don't, don't let it fool you. It was chaotic in the midst of, but, but, but you had a certain people who understood something. And that's why I'm talking preaching on the Holy Spirit because if it ain't done by his spirit, it ain't going to be done. And so it's chaotic. They got to figure out, man, what's up? So they said, look, man, we got to get into this word. We got to get into this word. See, watch this. 
you can't be everywhere. I can't be. Our pastors can't be everywhere Monday through Friday, and then you want to get up and critique on Sunday when you're not asking to stay with you all week. They got to get in the Word and pray every now and then. They got to, you know, you can't get mad because your pastor, whoever he is, or she is, or they is, or whatever, uh, they don't call you back right away. Tell somebody, time to grow up. I'm not saying you should never get a call back, so please listen to that now. What I'm saying is, there's a time that you have to get here. So why this? He said, look, should we stop the ministry of the word? Should we stop that? The wait on tables? He said, check this out. I'm not saying that that's, that's beneath us. What he's saying is my function in this body is important. And so guess what? I can't do that and then do this. Remember, I tell you this, to say yes to something is to say no to something else. So I can't strategize and, pick, and, and figure out how I'm going to feed these widows and then spend enough time in the Word. And a lot of people, they have put so much undue pressure on their pastor to be all things and then get up and check him off if he don't preach well on Sunday. What if we graded you on how much on how well you gave? What if we graded you on how well you served? What if we graded you on how well you prayed? How well, how much? What if we had a camera on you about on for your devotional time? Oh, somebody say Shonda. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's quiet in here now. You you grading yourself. You don't even want to grade yourself. It's open book test. Let me keep going so you get mad at me. Amen. So he said, hey, y'all come together. Y'all pick, man, here go, here go what y'all need to do. Y'all need to pick some dudes to get on this table. He said, so get seven men. Now, why are they chosen? This point, number one. Why were they chosen? He said, do this. Pick people who had good reputation, number one. See, why did we have seven people who want to come in, do the work of the Lord, but their character is messed up? See, their character is messed up. You see, you, I don't care what nobody thinks, but the Bible says in Proverbs, a good name is better than rubies. Amen? So you need to so understand what you're saying if it's a lie. But no, you should be concerned about your reputation in the community. Amen? That's a balance to that. Now, I ain't talking about you just, oh, they don't like me. They say, no, 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 you, know, you got to toughen up to that. But I'm talking about how you treat people. Do you make your appointments on time? Are you nice to people? Do you have good customer service? Amen? You go to Chick-fil-A just for the service. You already know it, too, it might be too high. You say, I don't even want to go to, I ain't going to call nobody else. I don't want to go to some of your other restaurants because I can pull up to the one that you ain't even seen me. Can I take your order? Wait, hold on, time out. See, I had to tell, I had to tell, uh, when we first started doing community work and everything, it's a, it's a young lady who wanted to work out with us. And, and do that. And I told the trader, I said, no, no, she can't do it. Mm -mm. I said, have you seen her Twitter? She can be behind, but she ain't gonna go represent me, Nathaniel, nowhere. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So why did it doesn't matter time a lot of the skill, it's who are you, who you are, who are you? People coming to the church, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on. I don't need you snapping and shaking your head, grabbing out. I don't need none of that. <laughs> I don't need you doing none of that when we're trying to build a kingdom. I don't mind you setting the grind rules and telling people, wait, you ain't going to talk me any kind of way, but you getting all sassy, and then that thing you know, don't go to kingdom. Amen. <coughs> Even with us, now we make mistakes. We're not 100%. <coughs> but even sometimes, let's just say something happened, we, we miss late. We were very, rather late now. Let me say that too. We at least, a, a trailer, whoever may send a note, said, please forgive us. We don't say, church is being late with us. I mean, you five, six months late on stuff. Tell somebody, good reputation. So he says, to somebody, good reputation. He says, full of, full of the spirit. Now this bothers me because sometimes, I'm like, okay, how can you tell people full of the spirit? And because, eh, so I just go with their character again because I would say they would just display the fruit of the spirit. 
God would say, hey, get somebody, get somebody who, 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 who their reputation is good. I'm going to tell you, one preacher, regardless of what you think about, I've never really heard, I, I ain't going to say really never heard, I've never heard anything bad about it, but Pastor David Sanders. I ain't never heard nothing, nobody say nothing about David Sanders. Not, like, you just, whatever. I'm not saying he's perfect, I'm just saying as far as his reputation in the community. And you might not hear something about me. It is what it is. I pray you think, but hey, you know. Here's another thing. He says, so, so I said, why choose them? I'm going to choose you because your reputation is good. You're full of the spirit, as Pastor Mark just said. Uh, like you're full of joy. You're just, you just doing it with a smile. Y'all want you coming in here, uh, uh, mopping flows or nothing. You <laughs> just stay at home. I can't do it. But then he said, the next thing is what? Full of wisdom. Full of wisdom. You got to have people who are full of wisdom. Know when to say no. Know when to say yes. And see, you can't put it, be put in a place because you still have stinking thinking. See, you don't, you don't necessarily have the mind of God because you still rely on your flesh. And so you're not in, in the word of God. You're not in the word of God enough to get the mind of God to act out that. And all, the, all wisdom is the practical application of what you know. So you can know something, but if you don't understand it, you can't use it. So that's why he says knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So wisdom, I take the information, I comprehend the information, and I apply it. The, uh, the, see, the issue is a lot of us come in here and get full of the word, so to speak, but don't go out and use it. So what you need is, and shower pray is, you, your prayer to be, Lord, give me the wisdom for the strategy I need for success. So here's the thing. You got over, I don't know, probably over 100 people during this time right here. So you got to be wise on how to deal with people. You got to be able to look at a thing and say, okay, this is what God would do. And if I miss, let's back it up and bring it, bring it back again. Amen? So guess what? Here's our blueprint. You need to have good reputation. You mean... You need to have good character, and you need to be able to have wisdom. You need to be able to think on your feet. But here you go. There are some things that you ain't gonna have to get. You can't understand. You are gonna have to get on your knees to get this wisdom. Hey, whatever you think, parenting does not come with a manual. Neither does marriage outside of Ephesians 5 and 1 Peter. and all. Outside of that, you're going to have to burn them knees up. Them knees are going to have to get a little dark because you're going to need to know. See, wisdom going to tell you, no, nah, don't say nothing right now. Some of y'all, some of us not wise because I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. Pastoring does not come with a manual. Very complex issues at times. Because if I do this, I got to worry about how this is going to offend this. You got to do this. Lord, just give me the wisdom. Amen? Amen. Let me give you a wise thing. It, it, I thought it was wise at one time. I think it's still wise because, hey, I mean, he was wrong. The story I'm about to tell you, the illustration. So, uh, and I told Matt this the other night, and I think Ty. So, I'm, we, we, I'm, this is when I was in college. So I walk, walk in, one of my uh, frat brothers, he comes and gets me. He says, dog, let's go. Let's go to my house. I got to take care of something. I said, what, what, what's wrong? Let's just go. Get everything. So he said, get everything. I'm getting everything. Let's go. So y'all didn't miss that, so that's good. So I, when we get to the house, I'm like, oh, I'm, first of all, I'm thinking to myself, what we about to get into? Keep in mind, we ride. He ain't saying, hey, man, what's going on? Nothing, man. We just got to take care of something at the house. <laughs> so you're taking me in. I don't know. You know I got this um, nine millimeter on me. Like, I just need to know what's going on. We good just when we get there. <laughs> now I'm thinking, why did I get in this car? Well, it's a frat, brother. I love it. We get to the house. Oh, I see what the problem is. Both of them don't showed up over here. 
Both of your women done showed up. Okay. Y'all said, now what this got to do with wisdom? I thought it was the wisest thing at the time. He didn't pick neither one. Hey, both of y'all get out. That, that was pretty wise to me. You ain't made no choice. You just told both of them to get out. What I'm saying is on the spur of the moment, you need wisdom. Amen. That's it. You might don't think that related. It related to me. Amen. My, the point is this. Here's the wise reason. If I don't choose who neither one of you, neither one of you can say y'all got the advantage. See, praise the Lord, saying, Amen. My point is, there are situations like that that what one of y'all would have done is got there and probably broke down or not even went. Then your house would have been towed up. Amen. What I'm saying is this. There are, there are times, even in ministry, where you're, you're going to be able to read in a book. You, there's nobody going to be able to tell it to you. You're going to have to get it straight from God. And God said, people who you're going to get to do my work, I need them to have a good reputation inside and outside of the church. I need them to be doing it with joy, with patience. But I also need them to be able to think my thoughts. Watch this, though. What was noticed about Stephen? Notice what it said. It said Stephen was full of faith, and here we go again, in the spirit. Tell somebody, I got a full tank. If you're going to do the work of the Lord, you're going to have to have faith. You're going to have to be full of faith. Not presumption, but faith. Faith is given when you hear a word or have a word from God and you move on that. The issue is you have a word, but you don't necessarily have no sight. But what happens is the more you meditate with the word, it gives sight. Ha, ha, give, give me that. First Samuel said in the days of Samuel that, that there was a lack of vision. That word there is the bar, which could also be word. So what happens is the more you spend time at the word of God, you will get the, the sight and the vision of God. Amen? Y'all stay with me. And so, and so what, this, what he's saying is the, what, the, more, the way I get faith is to spend time in the word of God. And I can't do this work without faith. I can't do it. See what it is? It's Noah did what he did based on the word of God. He had never seen rain before. Ministry of any kind, marriage ministry, children ministry, whatever your ministry, at work ministry, it requires you to move in faith. You got to know that you know that God has called you to do a thing. Let me tell you something, the thing we got going on now is going to take faith. It's going to take, you. Watch it. not faith in faith like we started out, but faith in God. If you believe all things are possible, then you got to walk in that. If he has given you something to do, walk fully in it. Tell somebody, I'm going to walk all the way in it. Say, I'm full of faith. Why did I, tell us again, I'm full of faith. Say it like you mean it. Say, I'm full of faith. See, what happens is we get in and we get real scary. We, we start tiptoeing. And God said, when you hear something, let's move. Abraham took out, not knowing where he was going, but he knew he had heard a word. What have you heard lately? What are you sitting on that God has told you to move on? Has he, has, he told you to, has he told you to break away from something that you're still holding on to? We started this church off a word of faith. Not presumption, of faith. We knew it. Boom. Let's move. You can't see sometimes the resources. You can't see. Some, that doesn't mean we didn't have wisdom. And then, no, no, if you talk to me, y'all know I'm very strategic. We don't. But there comes a time when you got to go because God say go. Why is it though? But why are you going? You do your research and everything. See, you don't shut off your brain because he say go. You leave it on and you still go when you hear the word. See, most people think just because I'm moving in faith, I, I'm just done cut it off. No, you leave it on, but see what it is. I'll tell you what, here, here's, a, here's the way you do it. You follow the practical until you get to the end and you got to move in faith. So when you get, uh, Thomas Aquinas says it like this. He said, there's some things, you're just going to get to the edge of it, 
And you're going to have to just believe in another realm. How many of y'all believe in another realm yet? See, that's another realm that you, that you got to that you gotta walk in. See, if you're a miracle, if you're going to be a miracle working uh, power wonder of God, then you're going to have to operate in faith. See, see you're going you're gonna to have to believe in the impossible that it can be possible. If you really believe all things are possible, why aren't we living like it? Why are we succumbing to the violence in our neighborhood? Why are we succumbing to the, to, to, to the low test scores? Instead of saying, when somebody going to rise up in our face and say, hey, let's get it. Pastor, what's the plan? We need to go into school. We need to set up a tutoring program. What are we going to do? But see, what happens is you hear so much and you get beat down so much Ms. McCann, that you really start settling for what's going on instead of rising up and say, I have the power and the might of God inside of me. And see, what you got to say is, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who dare? See, that's what you got to understand. When you got a big problem, you got to say, who is this? Who, what is this right here? God called me to the mission right here. What's going on? He called kingdom life to the mission. He called, what's going on that's in my way? And this is what it said about David. He ain't sitting and wait. Say, David ran to the battle. See, when you know God on your side, you might well go on and get it over with. Some of us sitting back, talking and all that. You say, oh, David, say, wait. You sitting in the way of what I'm doing? Give me his head. Say so what they noticed about Stephen. Say so he was full of faith. Do people, can people say you full of faith? One way you can tell somebody full of faith, what's the first thing that come out of their mouth when trouble hit? Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So if I tell I, I don't know what we's going to do. <laughs> that's the one you leave, leave alone right now. Amen. You don't know. Before I go to my next point, I hear somebody say, are you ride or die? Uh, you just pump faking. Amen? <laughs> Watch this, though. Here we go. So we got, we got, why was he chosen? What did they notice? Or what did he operate in? It said he, he was full of grace and power. Watch this. We operate in the grace of God through faith in God. See, everything we have, we enter in through grace, through faith, but grace is upon us. I thought it was interesting. It said he operated in the grace of God, where he was full of grace and full of power. Which this now tells me there are some things I'm going to need the grace of God and the power of God to accomplish in my life. And if I don't have the grace of God on my life and the power of God, it won't get done. Which tells me my natural ability won't be able to do it. Tell somebody, you got to tap in. in. What, what was the results? Watch this. It said because he was full of grace and full of power, here go the results. Signs and wonders. Don't get scared now because I'm going to talk about the supernatural. <laughs> See, we so used to the everyday mundane that it said that Stephen, right here, Stephen didn't have no title. The church ain't even that old right here on the night. The church is maybe a couple years old. Maybe it's out of on access, which you which come and tell you stead out of. The, the church ain't even that old. But, 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 but Stephen had enough faith, and he was full of grace. And guess what? He was full of power. But watch this. What caused it all, let me tell you this. You get all of that, let me go and get to the end, when you get the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you get the Holy Spirit, there's a grace on your life. There's power on your life. You should be able to walk in a room every now and then and some move, amen? Because why? It's on you. But we have relegated the Holy Spirit to just a feel good and jumping around, but he's everything that God is on the inside of the believer. You got power on demand. I want you to think about that. At your very beck and call is the very power from heaven. And some of us so intellectual, we count out the power of God. And I love to read. I love to get all into the Greek and the Hebrew. And this is what I realize. 
if you really talk to some people, you really see what they're going through, you're going to realize that ain't nothing that can handle that but the power of God. So you ain't got to the end of yourself. Let me talk. This is how I know to you when you really, this is why prayer is going to really get crunk in here. When you come in and say, God, I done encountered a problem that only you can fix. Right. See, right now you're still encountering problems that you can handle. But when you get to the end of yourself, you're going to say, if you don't do it, ain't nobody going to do it. Right. See, that's how I can tell. Because you're still playing in the low. I, I ain't knocking nobody when you're in your walk. But I'm saying, if, if you really going to get to the, the, the business, you really going to get to it. Let me go back. He says this. Remember, we, I taught on this. He said, why we couldn't cast it out? He said, this can't only go out by prayer and fasting. You still dealing with stuff because you ain't praying. And so you steady wrestling with some stuff. I'm going to talk next week about the grace to go through, but we're going to stay that one. Amen. Why didn't I? What you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is, when I put on my Facebook page. As y'all know, we're going to pray. We're going to pray 12 to 1. You see what the people put on the screen. You don't see what come in my inbox. You don't see that a sister called me and said, I done got to, to, to so much of a desperate end, I'm calling psychics. You, you don't see that one of my former students said, I had two abortions, one coming out of high school, one when I'm going to college, and I'm praying it again, I'm thinking about having another. So you don't see that. And see, I can't, ain't no intellectual ability at all going to handle that. We're going to have to handle that. Is me getting on my face and crying out, and me saying, God, heal her. And, and let her know, not, not, not to keep, not for, let her know you forgive her for the other two, but she's going to have to carry this one. So you need grace and power to deal with that. We can't just be kicking and high hard all the time. So, so guess what? I need to have a full tank. You need to have a full tank. Because you may get up, you don't know what's going to hit you when you get to work in the morning. So guess what? You got to stay on full. Tell somebody I'm on full. And, and now you tell somebody, if you ain't on full, you, you can get full today. So watch this. What else happened? He, because he was full of grace and power of the Lord, he began to get naysayers. Yeah. Right. See, when you really operate in the power of God, what's going on over there? Is it a cult? What y'all paying for? What y'all doing first Friday night for? You don't party no more. So he get naysayers. But this is what it says, that the naysayers couldn't cope with his wisdom. You ever opened your mind because you've been in a place with God and it, it you knew it wasn't even you talking? You ever gave so much revelation? See, if you're not there, that's what I want to invite you into. That you got to understand. See, you got to understand that you got to, you got to have enough humility to say, it wasn't me that time. But see, if you never step, if you never press the end, you'll always be operating in your flesh. You'll never step over and operate in the miracle working power of God because you'll stay right here in the shallow. But what he's saying is, come on out. Walk in my grace. Walk in my power. I want you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I want you to speak and people come out of bondage. I want you to speak. And, and, and you, you know what it is to be touched at a young age. Maybe I'm going to use you to get somebody else to come out of that. But if you stay in and don't give your testimony or your story at the right time, so who's staying in bondage because you won't stand up? We get selfish with what God gave us. What if God stayed selfish and said, I can't give you the go I can't give you this Holy Ghost. I can't give you Jesus. What if, what if God was selfish? But ask somebody, how we get selfish? What's the power that somebody's looking for? Do you understand how desperate it is? It gotta take somebody to get to the point where they inbox me to say, hey, I need help right here. 
Most of the time we get over 80 just on, my, on the page that people want to put on the page. Over 80 or 90. And you can ask Sharon, whoever come, Ingrid come, and what, you know, come, I come, I have my laptop, I pray over each one of them. And I ain't saying that to be there about me. What I'm saying is, when are you going to get in the game? When are you going to get on your face and cry? Lord, send, send the workers. Then I go, I keep talking about send the workers, send me. Where you want me to go? Where you want me to go outside, outside my comfort zone? Don't, don't give me all this, I'm standing in my lane. Now, some of y'all, you, you, you in your lane, you just ain't, in your, you ain't out your comfort zone. Some of you, I want, as long as I'm in my little box, I'm okay. But I don't think the cross was, was, in, his, was in his comfort zone. Like the cross couldn't have been in the comfort zone. Uh, getting whipped couldn't have been in the comfort zone. Getting his, getting his beard plucked out couldn't have been in the comfort zone. Uh, having, his, having all his uh, 11 disciples, the only one at the cross when it was joy, that couldn't have been in the comfort zone. Every now and then you got to get out your comfort zone. You ain't going to see nothing happen trying to be comfortable. That's why I told Matt, we're going to do something probably once a month. Because we want to see the world change, but we don't want to go out and be the change. You can't sit in your pew and cause change. You can't sit at home on Saturday and cause change. You, 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 preaching, preaching may cause some change, but guess what? You should get what's taught in here and let's go change the world. What are they going to give you the Holy Ghost for? Just so you can twirl around, speak in tongues every now and then, do a cartwheel, and go back home. The devil is a liar. You're full of grace and you're full of power. The problem is you haven't activated it. See, why? Because you're worrying about your issues. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants to get so consumed into my own issue that I don't help nobody else. Selfish. And the issue is all of us got issues. Some stuff you're going to have to just carry. I'm going to talk about it in there. Week. Let me get into it. Some stuff you're going to have to just carry with you and get them to talk to the man. He said, hey, he'll get up. Get what the man did. He still carried his bed with him. Some stuff he's going to help you walk with, but you're going to have to carry. Because you carrying it is the testimony. You carrying it. When that comes to you this when they come and say, how you doing it? Your kid ain't talking to you? That one over there acting crazy? But tell me this, how you doing it? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Boom! Now you can give them that testimony. I had a good sister call me today. If I call, no, I mean, put me in this morning. Her, her son, I guess her shooting on iBats last night. One guy died, her son was shot in the leg. I think the same one who had done been shot before. But see, that's what she said. I'm still pressing on anyway. What do you do when you call the ministry and your children caught up in the dope game? What, what do you do when you call the ministry and your child get, mad, get, get, get printed out of red lock? You can't quit. You may take a little reprieve, say, okay, God, what did I miss it? But you got to get back in the game. And we sit in here and think, well, he ain't dealing with what I'm dealing with. You don't know what I'm dealing with. You don't know what I'm dealing with, amen? amen. Them bet say, oh, y'all gonna make me lose my mind <laughs> up in here, up in, y'all gonna make me act the fool. <laughs> sometimes I feel like Melly Mel in here, baby. It's like a jungle sometimes. I said, don't push me. I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> Anybody ever been on the edge? Anybody ever been on the edge and be like, I can't, I, I don't know. But then you feel a peace. You feel a grace. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody to know, I've been on the edge too. But if you don't quit, he'll save you. Right. Sorry for all my stuff here. <laughs> Let me get ready to get out of here. He said that his face 
shown like an angel, which means guess what? Not his countenance. His countenance. Can you imagine being, watch this, they say they dragged him. I want you to see this. He's up preaching the gospel. He's knocking them down one by one as they come. Boom. Oh, you got that question? Boom. You can't handle this. But he's still so humble. They, they, they have dragged him off now, which means they seized hold of him. And they brought him before. You understand what it is to be dragged? So when you read your Bible, you got to read with imagination. They dragged him, show him. They dragged Come on. Now stand up here and tell us. And then when you stand up in front of all your accusers, your face shining. And they got to admit, he looked like an angel. What's the, what's, the, what's the conclusion, though? I must tell you the truth, that they end up killing him. I contemplated whether or not to say that, because I want to end on a good note. Because I'm talking about being full a full tank, and I don't want you to be scared, but I got to let you know that, that religion would always kill a real move of God. They made up stuff about him. So they induced men. Why do I believe the Holy Spirit led me to say that? Because I want to let you know now, just because you're living right don't mean you ain't going to have no issues. Just because you sit on and preach the gospel don't mean you ain't going to have no issues. Let me tell you something. You, can't eat, you can leave. Get what they're going to always do. They're going to always bring up your pad, Courtney. You tell them, it don't even matter about that no more. This is where I'm at right now. He wasn't doing nothing but telling the truth about God. Then if you read the rest of it, he broke it down from all the way from Adam and Abraham all the way up to Jesus. And he said, this is what y'all do. They said, they tore their clothes and began to stone him. And see, we, and see, you got to see what really stoning is. I ain't talking about these, these, these little pebbles. They picked up big rocks and hit them in the head. But this is what they say. The Bible tells us that Jesus is doing what? Sitting well at the right hand. But at this time, he looked up and saw Jesus standing up for him. Do you live a life where Jesus will stand up for you? <laughs> Do you live a life where he'll stand? He go from sitting to standing. Good God Almighty. He at the right hand say sit it. But because he's sin now, because he's taking the punishment, because then in the, in the way he died, he said forgive him. How can you be persecuted and still say forgive him? Amen. But it all goes back to being full of these five things. And I'm going to get out your way. You got to be full of the Holy Spirit. You got to be full of faith. You got to be full of wisdom. You got to be full of grace. And you got to be full of power. If you ain't full, you can't live this life. Listen to me. If you're not full, if you're not full, you're not going to be able to live this life. You got to be full. You got to be full of the very presence of God. I don't know about you. I want to be full of his grace. I want to operate in his grace. I don't want to operate outside of my grace. I don't want to operate outside of my grace, but I want to be full of his grace. I understand that, that grace is just more than a pass for me to do what I want to do. Because that's what we use grace for. We use it as a pass to do what we want to do. Not an empowerment to do what he wants us to do. So we trample over grace again. We trample over, we say that's what he died for. We, no, that ain't what he died for. He died so I can be conformed into his image. He put his spirit in me because I couldn't do it without his spirit. I want you to think about that. He, why? Because he, he was always going to be holy and I was always going to be human. So he said, let me put my holiness in your humanity. Because you can't walk this out without me. You tried before, look what happened. Oh, man, I pray for the day that, you, that we all just get a thirst for God. You know what my heart, man, my heart, my, my heart cried, been, Lord, made me more like you. Feel me. Let my heart be right. 
regardless of what I accomplish, regardless of what I do, let my heart be right. Because if my heart right, I can move how you move. If my heart is right, I can look like you look. I don't want the thing and miss you. I don't want all the accolades and then still miss you. Let my heart be right with you. Because if my heart right with you, I treat people right. I'm full of grace. I'm full of power. I want to move. I want to see stuff, Lord, but I understand that's what it takes me down to myself even the more. Refresh me, Lord. Let me not answer out of anger. Lord, you left Moses as an example for me, God. Let me not get mad or frustrated at my wife first or my son or my daughter or my people or my elders or whoever, and I strike the rock. Help me control my inner, my inner ambition. Help me watch my eyes, Lord. Help me watch my mind. Let me not say nothing contrary. You got to get past praying for, praying for cause. You got to get past praying for money. You got to get past that. And God, just make me right. Because I understand if I'm right, you will trust me with that. You don't mind me having that. But you mind me, though. What you want, what you want me. You want me to look like your son. Help me look like your son. No, it don't feel good all the time. But help me look like your son. Help me look like your son. Let me love people like that, God. God, I pray for my student, God. God, I can't, I can't even, I don't know what to do, God. I get on my face right now, God. Heal her, God. When I called her, she said, I'm, it hurt me, Mr. Johnson. And I don't know if I can do it again. I said, you won't do it again. You better not do it again. I don't care that you got two kids. You should have known anyway what was going on. I said, you ain't remember our trip, but I'll walk with you through this. They ain't going to leave you out here hanging. That's what I'm talking about right now. That's what we got to do. They may not be a member of Kingdom Life, but if I know their heart right, I ain't talking about nobody coming to you now, but if your heart right, it can't just always be about who in Kingdom Life. You got connections outside of here, but definitely if they in here. Anybody want your heart just to be right? Anybody want you to be filled with his glory, his presence? Anybody want to see the miraculous in their life? I'm talking about you want to be used by God. If you want to be used by God, just stand to your feet right now. Lord, use me. Let me get out my own way. Let me get out my way, Lord. Help me to get out my way, God. And God, I'm ready. I'm ready because I know it's going to be truth and it's going to be power. So if the naysayers come, you've already told me, don't worry about what to say. You'll give me what to say at that time. And sometimes if you don't want me to say nothing, I won't say nothing. Because I know at the end of the day, you'll stand up for me. <laughs> I know at the end of the day, you'll get out your place of rest to stand up and look at me. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine it? Can you imagine Stephen looking up and Jesus looking down at him? Who want to keep going for Jesus standing up for you? The altar is open for salvation. The altar is open if you need to be fooled.